Hello, Algebra 1 students. We are ready for Chapter 3, Section 3, where we're going to talk about rate of change and slope. First, we have a couple of review problems before we get into our slippery slope over here. Remember, we um, talked about rise and run, and that's what uh, slope is all about. But before we do that, let's make sure we can solve linear equations algebraically and by graphing. So to solve the first one, we'll add 5 to both sides. And 2x equals 30. So we'll divide by 2, and x equals 15. So that's solving it algebraically. Now let's solve by graphing. The best way to solve this is to get it to where 0 equals, carry everything over to one side and leave 0, also known as y or f of x. So if I subtract 5x from both sides, and if I add 6 to both sides, in one fell swoop I have 0, 0 equals <clears throat> negative 2x minus 2. So we're ready to make a graph, pick some points for x, and plug them in to find y. I always like to stay near my origin, so let's do negative 1 negative times negative is positive 2 minus 2 is 0. Let's try 0. That will give us negative 2. And let's try 1. That gives us negative 4. So now I'm ready to plot negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0 is right there. 0, negative 2 would be right here. There's my x-intercept and my y-intercept. And then 1, negative 4, 1, 1, 2, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4. That 1 I almost didn't count. I was just making sure I had not made a mistake previously. And there would be our line. <clears throat> okay, and then this one just says to solve. So if we try to solve, we add 4x to both sides. And we end up with 9 equals 1, and we know that's not true, so this one has no solutions. Okay. Now, let's talk about the new topic, rate of change. <clears throat> I briefly mentioned this in class, but let's see if you remember. I said x is independent. It's the independent variable. y is the dependent variable. So x can be anything you want it to be, and depending on what you choose for x, that will determine what the value of y is. So when we look at the rate of change, it's always going to be the change in y over the change in x. And I learned in college that the um, Greek letter delta stands for the words change in. So delta y over delta x. And I also have another little mnemonic for you <clears throat> where you can remember which one goes on top. This is just a fun way to remember. I'm going to draw this and make this look like a martini glass. And I'm going to put sweet tea in my martini glass. That's just the glass. I'm not advocating drinking martini or anything. I'm just saying that's that's the kind of glass that looks like. It's a Y over a picnic table. And on my picnic table, I need some legs to hold it up, and those look like X. So that's my way of remembering to always put Y over X when you're finding the slope, all right, or the rate of change. <clears throat> Rate of change is the ratio, we talked about that in class also, that shows how much change occurs. So when we're talking about slope, it's going to be the rise over the run. Or uh, we're going to talk about how much does it change going up and down vertically versus comparing it to how much it changes moving right to left. So in uh, a nutshell, it's the change in Y, that's your up and down, your vertical axis. The change in X is your left and right, or your X axis. All right, so rate of change is always linear 
only if it is constant rate of change. A rate of change is linear if the change is constant. So that's important to remember. So is the formula for rate of change. And it's just a ratio. We talked about that's the comparison. And you also, I would highlight that x is independent and y is dependent. We talked about domain and range. Domain is the numbers you plug in and they spit out the range. All right, let's start with some real world examples. Uh, using this table, it says, find the rate of change. Then it asks us to explain the meaning of the rate of change. And this is talking about driving time. So let's look at our table. It looks like X is our hours in time and it's every two hours they've recorded the distance that they traveled. So let's look for the rate of change. Remember that formula, it's the change in Y over the change in X. I always like to write this down to remind myself to put the Y on top. So my Y is here, if I check, um, we'll keep it positive. Let's do 152 minus 76. I just picked two of the Ys. 152 corresponds with four. They are an ordered pair, minus two. And so when we subtract those, 76 over 2 simplifies to 38 over 1. All right, let's just make sure it's a constant rate of change. Let's see if we get the same ratio when we pick uh, another set of times. So let's check the other pair. So we've got 228 minus 152 over 6 minus 4. Sure enough, 76 over 2, we're going to end up with the same rate. So it is a constant rate of change. That means it's, if we plotted these points, it would be linear. Now what does this mean? 38 to 1. Remember, X was our time, and our time was in hours. So distance was in miles. So we are traveling at a rate of 38 miles per 1 hour. That's what that means. All right, the graph to the right shows the number of U.S. passports issued from 2002, 2004, and 2006. So this might be a little bit of an old example, but we can still find the rates of change from 2002 to 2004, and then from 2004 to 2006. Here we have the formula written. This time we're looking at the change in quantity versus the change in time. All right, so looking, I'm going to leave my screen still, um, but you'll want to look at your graph because I'll be looking at the graph I have in, in paper. So to compare 2002 and 2004, now this is in millions, 8.9 million um, compared to 7 million. So that's the quantity and we were comparing um, 04 to 02 and that gives us 1.9 over 2 which is 0.95 million okay then they asked us to also compare 04 to 06 <clears throat> so 06 minus 04 and 06 is 12.1 minus 8.9 and 3.2 over 2 and that gives us 1.6 now one thing I want you to notice 0.95 and 1.6 it is not the same rate of change and look at our graph that is not a straight line so if you do not have the same rate of change it is not linear <clears throat> okay now they're asking us to explain the meaning of the rate of change in each case. So 0.95, um, if we're talking about millions, that's 950,000 because you'll multiply million times, um, well, you move your decimal six places <coughs> uh, per year. That was the, the rate of change for the first year from 02 to 04. From 04 to 06, the change was 1.6. So that, when you move your decimal six places, that'll be 1,600,000 divided 
Did I say 950 million, 950,000 compared to 1 million, 600,000 per year? Okay, how are the different rates of change shown on the graph? Well, you can see um, 04 to 06, look at, it's a steeper, this is a steeper change. It changed more. So, so how are the different rates of change shown on the graph? Well, from 04 to 06 has a greater vertical change, or it's steeper. And I don't know why my paper keeps doing that, so I'm going to quit trying to write that. Okay, moving on. Constant rate of change. Determine whether the function is linear. Remember, to be linear, they have to have the same or constant rate of change, the same rate of change. So let's check. We're going to do the slope formula. So 12 minus 6 over 2 minus 1. Remember to put your y's on top, and that's 6 over 1. Let's try the next pair. Uh, 18 minus 12 over 3 minus 2. Oh, that's also 6 over 1. My 1 didn't show up the first time. Okay, and then let's try 24 minus 18 over 4 minus 3. And it's again 6 over 1. So, because we have a constant rate of change, and because it's constant, yes, it will be linear. Now, we have a nice little um, review of our concepts on the next page. I've highlighted some of the important terms there. And of course, do not forget the formula. This is the formal formula, how to find slope. The number one careless mistake students make is they get their X and Y mixed up. So remember, it's the change in your Y over your change in X. I know this is review from last year. As you admire this pretty picture, I want you to realize that vertical lines have undefined slope. A line that is going uphill is considered to have a positive slope. A horizontal line that's supposed to be perfectly horizontal has zero slope. Um, and a downhill line is negative. And I have a little mnemonic. I always say you can make a Z out of a horizontal line, making it zero slope. And you can make a U out of a vertical line, calling it undefined slope. So remember those when you are working your problem. Here it is again at the top of the next page uh, in a more formal um, way. But I thought the picture was a lot of fun. Let's work on finding slope. How do you find the slope of the line that passes through two points? You're going to be using this formula. Let me get you started. I'm going to let you finish the rest on your own. So this is our first X and Y that we have in our pair of points. And here is the second X and Y. So I'm going to say 5 minus 2 over 5 minus a negative 3. Be careful, minus a negative makes plus. And so that's going to be 3 over 8. So the first slope for number 1 is 3 over 8. And you'll work through these problems just taking your time and using the formula. Remember that the first ordered pair is usually x sub 1, y sub 1. The second ordered pair is x sub 2, y sub 2. This is just saying couple number 1, couple number 2. You are not squaring x and y. And the last type of problem in this section says to find the coordinates if you're given the slope. So here's my formula, and I'm going to plug in what I know. I have my first x and y. My second x, I don't know what it is, so they said call it r. And then they gave me my slope is 1 half. So as I plug in my points, I have 2 minus 3 over r minus 6 equals 1 half. Let's simplify. That's negative 1 over r minus 6. Let's build them a house. r minus 6 stays together because I'm going to have to treat that as one number. And here I can cross multiply because it's a fraction equal to a fraction. And when I cross multiply, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then 1 times r minus 6 will just stay r minus 6. You can uh, drop the parentheses now, since we only multiplied by 1, add 6 to both sides, and r is 4. I'd like for you to try number 2 in a quick joke. 
Which monster is the best dancer? The boogeyman.